say you're a lawyer. Did you find John Dean a credible witness in the uh, Watergate? Uh, a thousand years ago, I used to be a trial lawyer. Yeah. And uh, I, found, I found him, uh, what, what little I saw, I didn't have time to look at too much of it. I found him uh, what one a lawyer, I suppose, would call an effective witness. The kind of lawyer and, uh, would like get, to he have. He didn't get tripped up uh, too easily on cross-examination. Of course, the, those hearings really don't have effective cross-examination anyway. That's not, that's sure. not the purpose of a, of a congressional hearing in the first place, so that it isn't really as, quite as professional a thing as you, as you might get in a courtroom. Didn't you startle a lot of people by uh, saying the press was unfair to the Nixon administration on this? Uh, make a Who, me? Yeah. No, well, that's not what I said, Dick. Uh, I, I know what you're referring to. I had a, gradu a graduation speech at York College, which is a part of our city university system. We have this large city university, and it's divided up into colleges, and the newest one is called York. It's in Queens, and I gave a talk there in which I tried to analyze the, uh, what uh, uh, Watergate had done to the fabric of the country. And what I was saying was that uh, it, was, it was, first of all, that there was a gap and a vacuum there to which the press had to come into and did. And they'd done a superb job, really, done a job that nobody else was doing. Um, secondly, that uh, it's clear that if there's been malfeasance and criminal acts, they have to be pursued and prosecuted all the way through. I also said that sometimes events of this kind breed reactions. And uh, in the in the great rush uh, now to get on the side of rectitude and righteousness. Mm -hmm. uh, there can be some errors made. And uh, there's, there's been an awful lot of leakage. Uh, the grand jury process has been all but destroyed. I think, it's a, I think the grand jury process isn't worth much anymore anyway in the, in the United States. The British got rid of it, and they were right. Um, and, uh, but that's now no longer a secret process, which is its only virtue. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, then I do think, too, that there's an awful lot of this huge amount of, uh, of, of hearsay, and uh, there's an awful lot of stuff in print that can be very damaging to innocent people. In Great Britain, uh, it couldn't happen. You'd be, up the, uh, you'd be up before the courts on contempt charges. What I'm saying is that it's a, it's a, time, it's a time to be very sensitive about civil libertarian issues that, that are involved here. That every strong action always brings a reaction, and that troubles me, and that's the only point I was trying to make. So I think, thank God that uh, Archibald Cox, who's the special prosecutor down there, who's, is very sensitive about this problem. He, very, he worries about it all the time. I don't say it's, the, it's not the press's fault. The press did what they had to do. Uh, they did fill a vacuum. They did a first-class professional job. Uh, now, now the, the, at least uh, this ugly process is going, I say, uh, the, the ugly events are being uncovered, mm -hmm. and the, uh, what has to be done is being done. But it's time for everybody to bear in mind, uh, as the London Times quite appropriately pointed out in an editorial, uh, be sensitive to the problem of civil liberties, and uh, don't allow the, the, uh, the great rush of the moment to, uh, to unnecessarily damage some innocent people. Uh -huh. some. Did, did you, uh, do you do you agree as a politico that the stuff that's beginning to come out about San Clemente now may be more damaging to the minds of middle America, wherever they are, than, uh, Possibly. than, than all the political chicane? Yeah, the I idea that someone might have gotten a million dollars worth of house improvements free when most yeah. people can't afford an air conditioner or to pay off their mortgage well, may hit harder if there is, in fact, a parallel scandal there, which is now, now being hinted that there is. Um, well, I think out of the out of the background of this dreadful Watergate business, that that does become important, and it has to do with morality. It has to do with uh, with uh, restraint. It has to do with uh, with uh, sensibilities and civility. But isn't it funny uh, that but that the, would uh, the key thing is the key thing there is I think is that is that nobody would expect the United States government to be ungenerous in respect of its president and his and his needs. Mm -hmm. This this uh, tends to show. Uh, additional thoughtlessness on top of Watergate. I say thoughtlessness is political insensitivity is what it comes down to. Uh, on the part as, of whom? On the part of the White House. Oh, uh, yeah. uh, it shows It shows political insensitivity, uh, heavy-handedness, yeah. and, uh, and a kind of a crudeness in operation that, uh, that after Watergate or on top of Watergate, uh, yeah. it, it, there's a sense of outrage that has to develop out of that. And I think people may indeed be as affected by the San Clemente businesses by Watergate, although 
it's in the larger scheme of events, it's less important. Would you care to make a prediction on, on whether the uh, president will weather all of this? No, because I'm because we don't know where this is coming out or not. I I would uh, uh, I think that the Congress is absolutely right in being very very cautious about going about driving this to the ultimate, which would be impeachment. Do you think the president being knew? Very, and, very, as very they say? cautious about it, and they should be cautious about it. You'd, one one doesn't. Uh, uh, one approaches a constitutional crisis very carefully. Yeah. And uh, that's the problem involved here. Uh, I think any... that I really think that the uh, the crux of the matter, is, and this is not original because because several people have, have said it again and again. The crux of the matter is the sufficiency of press conferences, and this president uh -huh. uh, had always had and would now have uh, lots of press conferences, a series of them, always being cross-examined by the press, as it were. It's yeah. painful. Uh, it can. Uh, it can, uh, can leave scars, it's difficult, but it's the only answer. It's the mm -hmm. only way a democracy can function, really. Now, Are you willing to question? answer yes or no, what whether you think question? the president knew or didn't know all the things he's No, I don't think I can answer yes or no, because I really it would be a pure guess, and that, yeah. would be, that, would be, that would be wild. It would be irresponsible, really. And I think that has to be tested at the, uh, in the process here. That's what, that's what the hearings are are about is, as well as the ultimate prosecutions that will follow in the federal court system. I say the hearings are about the job of the Congress is to legislate, and they can do anything uh, that they have to do in order to inform themselves to create legislation. And uh, their job is not to see to it that somebody goes to jail. Their job is not to handle that job, which is, uh, which is a different branch of government. Their job is to, is to create a structure of laws and a rule of law that people can live under. And the law that ought to come out of this thing is something that, that salvages the democratic and political processes in the United States. And it, it's in chaotic condition at the moment. And perhaps if you had to point to one thing that was the root cause of so much as the evil, it's the wretched business of campaign financing, which is a nightmare. And now it's turned into an obvious scandal. And if the Congress doesn't clean that up and make it impossible for these massive campaigns to take place with huge cost, creating obligations, indebtedness, uh, all kinds of relationships that are really dreadful. If that, doesn't, if that doesn't get cleaned up, then Congress will not have done its job. Money is the root there uh, and so forth. Very much uh, so. I just thought of something before you go. There was just a sign-up saying you had to. Was that an opinion or was that no. a... <laughs> no. uh, it was my adoring public. Throwing somebody mentioned right. on a show here one <laughs> night that uh, once the hard hats were mad at you yeah. and they were picketing and holding up signs and one of them said, Lindsay is a fag. <laughs> now, that's, that's the truth. I've been accused of everything but never of that. Don't you think give me some good in some quarters. My, but I mean, isn't that? <laughs> I just wondered what kind of reaction you have to think. Isn't that unfair of them to bring a thing like no, that I've up? I've been accused. I've been accused of everything in the world. There is practically <laughs> nothing. I've never been accused of that. Uh, not right. However, that's yeah. interesting. That's yeah. interesting. The fag vote is a very large vote. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, please send the mail to him. I got the last letter and so did <laughs> send it to Jack. Uh, thank you for being here. Good to see you again. Nice to Great. see you. Okay. <laughs>